get knowledge from all parts of the world even though we are physically very much separated so <laughs> this webinar is also aims to connect people who are at different parts of the world with the, the lo locally local stu with the, the students of our college and maybe to some other colleges also if interested for the time being we are not we have not connected to other colleges so people all over the world can watch these such, uh, uh, such webinars and uh, they, uh, they can exchange knowledge so that is an opportunity that has been brought by the covid 19 even though it is a very difficult situation in all other aspects and that is one good aspect as far as the covid 19 uh, pandemic situation is concerned now coming to the today's program we have uh, we are going to be, uh, hear from one of my students as already as i already said dr abdullah abdul salam who was uh, in sir said college as a bsc student in the year 2006 i think and thereafter he left uh, for msc at uh, aligarh university and uh, from there he where he started where he completed uh, msc and thereafter phd started doing phd there and completed phd from bark and uh, he uh, took phd in nuclear science uh, which is uh, one of the major areas of research as far as physics is concerned and uh, his subject is particle physics again it is a very very a lot of advancements are taking place in this field and uh, uh, he um, uh, thereafter he moved abroad and he's associated with the famous zern that is the uh, council for uh, european council for nuclear research it is uh, uh, and uh, he's also he has done research work in connection with the lhc large hadron collider and thereafter he came back and now at present he is working in saudi arabia he is assist assistant of the da university and uh, you can uh, the students especially can get a lot of motivation from him because he belongs to parengadi and he is the son of uh, managing director of our college and uh, sap abdul salam sahib and uh, he came he has come from background which is quite similar to you and uh, uh, he had a, in the right from the beginning he had an eagerness in physics and uh, he developed it and uh, he has uh, grown into a good research scholar and a, a good academic personality and uh, i take this opportunity to invite him to this webinar <laughs> then we have with us our beloved principal who has taken initiative in starting such a webinar and uh, on the uh, uh, just for a, for a formality i am take i am uh, inviting him to the to chair this function thank you sir so, uh, igbal sir please thank you sir uh, you are welcome then we have with us i think uh, sap abdul salam i think he is if he is there his name is there sap abdul salam managing di director wadi huda i welcome uh, also uh, i also welcome him on, uh, just for a formality because he is part of uh, he is the backbone of this institution and uh, his contribution to this inst uh, uh, institution is um, enormous and uh, formally i just for a formality and invi invite him to this webinar also um, uh, mr mohammad sajad pk academic director I welcome him also, Academic Director of Adi Huda. Uh, just for a formality, I am just welcoming him to this webinar. And then we have uh, Secretary uh, Mr. Farooq Usman, um, for the Tasli Islam Trust. And uh, I invite him to this webinar. Uh, then uh, I invite the teachers of this department, uh, Jasira and uh, Safina. Uh, we are again uh, it's only a formal thing i'm uh, formally inviting them and uh, all the students are uh, welcome and uh, you are i think you are all eager to uh, hear from dr abdul abdul uh, abdullah abdul salam and uh, uh, we can expect a lot of motivative motivational things uh, as far as uh, his talk is concerned you can get a lot you can get a lot of knowledge as well as 
a motivation from him and uh, with these words uh, uh, inviting all the others inviting all the others who are, who are watching uh, this webinar uh, with this words i uh, invite uh, our beloved principal to chair the function excuse me sir please Okay. could you please mute others a lot of distraction that's right others please mute their okay so i invite our beloved principal to chair the function and uh, address the uh, gathering okay Uh, Mr. Kiran means you can unmute all others. Sorry, you can mute all. Okay. So, thank you, Ramendran sir, for your kind words, and uh, we are very happy, and uh, we are really motivated. That means uh, Dr. Abdul Abdul Salam, and he is our he is the son of our managing director, and uh, he is a native of Bayangadi, and uh, he is just like. you people I means just like you people the people in the saranya saranya please can you please mute your audio the host can uh, mute all other people the host can mute all other people yeah yeah so we are very happy that means we got an eminent personality and uh, that personality is from the native of wadi huda also and from the uh, son of uh, uh, sap salam abdul salam sir and uh, he is our managing director and uh, we are very much proud about him because uh, he is a uh, as our uh, ramendran sir said means uh, it's a very means wonderful moment for our physics department and even though means we were trying for him last for the last so many years to interact with the students but unfortunately means we were unable to get him but the god the corona or covid makes us a lot of fortunate because we can contact lot of people around the world and this meeting and this zoom meeting and this zoom webinar i think lot of people are watching this one even means uh, through zoom zoom is only limited for our uh, internal purpose means internal teachers and students can uh, watch this program and uh, the remaining students the out of means other students of uh, other departments and other colleges and uh, even from national international they can watch the videos from uh, our uh, webs, uh, our facebook means uh, it is available in our facebook live also so i hope that uh, the things are going very well and we are eagerly waiting for his speech and i don't want to introduce him again because already means our ramendran sir introduced very well about the things and all so i hope that means his journey for physics his journey through physics will inspire us all of us because i am also very happy because i am also a part of physics means actually my post graduation is in electronics it is also from physics so and it is the beginning of our uh, uh, webinar series because we are uh, we are planning webinars of in different department different department and uh, physics psychology commerce and uh, so many departments are there so i think uh, this is the first uh, webinar in our uh, webinar in this academic year so it will be a motivation for other departments and for a competition also so i wish all the very uh, all the very best for this webinar and uh, i invite dr abdullah abdul salam directly to enter to the webinar so sir please kiran please unmute Okay, now I will share my slides. Okay.
I think you can see my slides, right? Yes, we can see. Oh, okay, fine. So, respected principal. Well, sir. Sorry. Someone is someone is speaking. Sorry. Respected principal Iqbal sir and the respected professor, my professor Ramajandran sir and uh, all other dignitaries and uh, my dear students. A warm good afternoon for all of you. And uh, thank you for inviting me and giving some, such an opportunity to present my uh, knowledge and my understanding and my work. So, first of all, I, I would like to thank you, my professor, Ramanandra sir, who was my tutor, who was my mentor in uh, Sussex College. And uh, I, from, from my heart, I will say, I would say that uh, I got many, many motivation and many sincere lessons from him during the class and out of class. So, so today's topic is Curiosity for the fundamental constants of matter. So this is like a quest. This is like a search for the fundamental blocks of the universe. So let us see what is our universe when it is started. So we have a very well-defined theory, Big Bang theory, that is well-defined in the sense that it is whatever it is predicted, whatever it is suggested is according to this theory, it is happening in the course of time. So our Big Bang, when the Big Bang started around 10, 10 to the power 40, 10 to the power minus 44 year, years back. So from that, it is evolved in a different stages of the, the, the particle evolution. So in the beginning, it was very hot and dense matter, very hot and dense matter. At that time, we are calling that this is core gluon plasma after, after the Big Bang explosion. Then you can see that it, while it is time increasing, you can see there is a, a three scales, time, temperature, and energy. As time increasing, the new evolution, the new stage, stage, the stages of the new evolution, you can see in this picture. So in the first in the first stage, there are elementary particles like quarks, gluons, and uh, some uh, subatomic particle like uh, w, w and the Z boson, and some top quark. Then after the interactions, after the interaction of the, these particles, after some time during this time, the, the particle is in, uh, with a strong. We, can, we will see what what kind of the interaction we will explain later. But due to some interaction, it forms some bound states. So that is around this 10 to the power two seconds after the just big bang. Then again, again, it is now the bound state. There are some neutral state, neutral particles. There are some charged particles. There are some stable particles. There are some unstable particles. So during this this course of time. Now, new particles emerge like electrons, positrons, neutrons from these elementary particles, from these elementary quarks and gluons and other uh, subatomic particles. So, so you can see that uh, after some years, like 10 to the power 5, that's uh, around billion, uh, billion years, now the, the new interaction coming to play, that is uh, electromagnetic interaction. So at that stage, the atoms, molecules, coming to the picture, they, they, they are start to interact. That's, that, will, that will slowly, gradually coming to the new state of, uh, uh, new, new state of matter, also, also new uh, form, of, uh, form of the building blocks. So the so next stage, you can see that stars, galaxies, and other, other kind of the, the, uh, the matter in the universe are formed. Now, finally, we, the human being, evolved in this stage. 
around some billion years after the Big Bang. So this is some initial kind of some evolution of the, the, the particle and uh, the development of the, 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 the particle physics or not the particle physics, the, the studies of the different the interaction and the, the creation of the particles it shows from this picture. Okay, now the, the, the basic question is, what is the fundamental of the every object in the universe? This is not a new question. This is this question is very old. We can say that since from the from the start of the the, the, the creation of the human being or the evolution of the human being. So people start to ask from the long back, what is the world made of, and how it is, how it what is the, the what is what is the force that holding together. So this these were the questions that every. In the, that was a horizon in every era of the time. So, during the, by the observation, by the testing, we can say, in the earlier time, only, only the observation, we can say. So people understand that. And people start to think that, why the so many things in the world share same characteristic, like uh, the the the, 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 the mat or, or the, the stuff, the things in the world have similar structure or the stuff in the world have similar kind of atoms or the stuff in the world of similar chemi chemical properties. And from the observation, people have to come realize that the matter of the world is made from some few fundamental building blocks of nature, few elementary building blocks of nature what i mean fundamental what i mean elementary means it is like point like point like particles it is some basic building blocks of matter that means there is no smaller particle inside that uh, inside that the parent particle that's what i mean fundamental there is no smaller particle inside it there is no other particle uh, there is no structure in uh, there is uh, it has no structure so that's what I mean, the fundamental or elementary particle of physics. So in the, in the earlier time, people were thinking that the building blocks of matter, matter I means whatever you are, we are watching, we are observing in the universe, that is we are calling matter, like water, any ice, any mountain and fire, etc. Anything in the world, what we are watching, that is we are calling the large, category as a matter. So the earlier people, it was, uh, they considered that the building blocks or elementary or the fundamental things inside each object is like fire, water and earth, uh, earth air and earth. And in the ancient time, the Greek, Greek thinkers, they were, maybe they were the first time they classified the fundamental elements as a fire, air, earth and water. And in India also, we have a very rich uh, philosophy. We have a very rich history in the uh, like knowledge in the Sankhya Kariga by uh, Ishwara Krishna in the third century AD, maybe in the some BC. In that text also, it claims that there are some five elements, uh, five elements of the uh, basic fundamental blocks. Like uh, it, it says that space, air, fire, water, and earth. But these were the some merely some observation. Merely, it's not like uh, some sophisticated experiment. It's not like so, some from the this were these claims, these arguments, not from the sophisticated testing. So later, after some uh, some uh, some like century uh, later, so people developed many technology. People developed the new experiment setup. So based on the experiment setup in the early 1800. John Dalton, the famous scientist who developed the, who introduced the atomic theory, he introduced that uh, according to the, the, the atomic theory, he proposed that all matter was composed of the atoms. It means he proposing atom is the fundamental particle. Atom is the basic building blocks of every object in the universe. 
So according to his theory, it is indivisible. That is why the atom name it's, uh, itself means, and it is indestructible. We can't destruct this particle. That means it is the, like uh, it is like from the beginning it is like this. We can't divide. We can't destruct. So this is the building loss of matter. So according to this theory, every uh, the, every, every phenomena, every physics, every science phenomena can be explained more or, more or less well. But later experiment, later experiment means with more uh, advanced technology at that time, suggested that no, atom can't be the fundamental. There are some experimental evidence, it shows that it should be the fundamental and there, there should be some other small particle inside the atom. We will come to that uh, things. So around 1900, people thought of atom is some uh, like uh, there are many models as you know as you studied in the during your first year or second, uh, during the your higher secondary school or in the uh, first years of uh, uh, degree class. So the atom has uh, they, they have many. Uh, they, they were suggesting that the scientists were suggesting or proposing new models to explain. Well, the characteristic, the properties, the whatever we have observed in the experiment, experiment to, uh, they, are, uh, they are developing new theories. So one of the theories that's plum, plum pudding model for explaining the atoms at that time. So, but it was not uh, it was not accepted well because of the, the it is not uh, explained well the whatever the observation from the experiment. And uh, so the still, still question is uh, is atom is fundamental because why this the questioner is that. According to this John Dalton, the, he was suggesting a good theory and uh, based on the atoms, and he is suggesting that it is indivisible. And uh, it, this theory could explain many observations, many phenomena in the science, I mean, in the chemistry and the physics. But later experiment, it shows that it is something contrary his arguments, his uh, claims. Okay, so now. We have later the, the pupil realized that atom can't be the fundamental. Why? Because they they could they could categorize the atom into different groups, which share similar chemical properties. It means that we can arrange the atoms in different groups. It has a, it has a similar properties. That is based on the something inside the particle, each atom. So it means that the atoms were made up of something simpler or smaller building, block, building blocks. This was the one indication that uh, atom could not be the fundamental or elementary. Later, other you as, as everyone knows, that's a very well powerful experimental proof from the gold foil, gold foil experiment from the Ernest Rudolf Ford. So from this experiment, he, the bombardment of the alpha particle in the gold foil, foil nucleus, he understood that, or we understood that, this positive alpha particle was, is substantially deflected, is substantially scattered, scattered back. So it means that there must be something inside the atom that could deflect the alpha particle and that should be some small dense and positive charge particle so later we understood that this is some the core of the atom and we call the nucleus of the atom so now we understood that okay atom is not the fundamental atom is not the elementary it is something inside it has something inside it it has some structure so what, what, what are the new things then? So let us see. So are the protons, so are the protons and neutrons elementary? So during that time, as we know, many experiments was, many, many experiments were performed in different labs around the world to understand what is the nature of the each atoms, to understand what is the, uh, fundamental things to understand what is the basic things in each atoms. So some people suggested that this is the hydrogen nucleus that is same 
in each atom? Some people suggest that no. It is some other particles that is common in every every atom. So one of the sign is proud hypothesis. His suggestion, he, his suggestion was hydrogen was the building blocks of the all elements. So this was this suggestion was from his uh, according to his experiment and and the discovery later understood that the hydrogen nucleus is present in all other nuclei as you know hydrogen nucleus is basically one proton at that time proton was not discovered and uh, this discovery the understanding of the hydrogen nuclei as a as in a one particle state like a one like a proton like a proton we say like one particle state that led to hydrogen nucleus as a proton proton means itself is a first it's like it's a first in the periodic table and this proton and uh, the neutron that's the components of the nucleus is is uh, later discovered in 1919 and 1932 in the uh, other experiment so what i'm saying that see the the people were doing experiment according to the experiment people are suggesting new hypothesis people are developing new theory so that they so that one could one, one could explain what they observed in the experiment so one of the thing is that proud hypothesis was hydrogen was the building block blocks of the all elements that is according to the experiment that only hydrogen is means basically means that one particle nuclei that is common every atom that was his observation in his experiment from this ex experiment so it is like that from the theory and experiment it's like each and they can uh, uh, give and take a relation so once the theory proposed according to the experiment experiment will conduct some new new setup then from the observation the, the the theory and the model will try to explain if if it is if, if if the theory or if the model can't explain the the whatever the uh, the observe whatever the uh, data or what we observe from the experiment then the theory should be modified or the hypothesis should be modified to explain the experimental observation okay so during that time in time many other experiments in the different world was held at various labs with the discovery of new other particles like electrons neutrinos muons and uh, so many other things like uh, subatomic particles like pions and kions so what i am saying that all these are like uh, like uh, the curiosity or the search of the new other particles new elemental particles all this was happened in the search of new fundamental constants of matter so one of the example is that see in the beta decay the conservation in the beta decay at that time the neutrino was not uh, discovered and uh, people uh, the neutron beta decay you know the neutron decays to the proton electron and the anti neutrino and at that time neutrino was not discovered but while people are calculating the energy conservation momentum conservation and the, this one angular momentum but in the beta decay angular momentum is not conserved from the according to the experiment neutron decays with some energy and the, the final particles like protons and electron has it, it, it has some energy in the detector but according to the experiment it is not conserved so what happens so later the dirac proposed that there should be some missing particle that is invisible that is neutral that's why neutron is the name a name itself shows he suggested there should be some particle invisible particle later in the experiment we discovered we understood that there is a new elementary elementary means there is no particles discovered so far inside the neutrino like the electron it was discovered according to this uh, proposal also the discovery of the positron later in the stage suggested that 
there could be anti particles for each particle there should be anti matter for every matter in the universe so it's like a pairs every particle in the universe is like created in a pairs so as i said in different labs there are huge variety of activities were performed experimental uh, actions were performed to find uh, to understand the nature to understand the, the some fundamental uh, to understand the, the properties of the fundamental particles so in that during that stage like from the in the early uh, 19th century up to the 1950 uh, 60 there are huge number of additional particle additional particle what i means other than the protons and neutrons like pions kions sigma and all other sigma all other unstable all other uh, the subatomic particle many other subatomic particle were discovered during this time now like the periodic table of the chemical elements the people start to classify categorize the sub subatomic particle like hadrons so as i shown here the particles like we can categorize leptons and hadrons lepton basically electrons neutrons and neutrino and at that time only hadrons at the uh, at the 1950 uh, 60 only hadrons was uh, named because the there was no the quark quarks quarks and gluons quarks and gluons were not discovered at that stage so from this observation like one of the one of the sophisticated we have to say one of the sophisticated classification categorization from famous scientist gelman based on some theory that's a group theory we say this is a mathematical uh, theory but it is very very powerful and a very high level application and so many application the physics also in chemistry chemistry also according to the this they are from the based on the group theory they categorized the particles in this form according to their charge according to their, the, the according to their quantum number like we can say quantum number spin charge orbital quantum number and like other quantum number like we have the strangeness quantum number at that time this is some new quantum number for the uh, the particle physics so this classification named as eightfold way in the sense that okay we we can categorize the particles neutron proton sigma all these according to their this uh, strange quantum number means i will explain what is strange quantum number later and according to their spin according to their charge see when the scientists developing this classification this categorization this sigma zero was not discovered when the scientists suggesting this triplet this omega minus was not discovered but according to them then uh, the lambda sigma cascade there are uh, one more particle was not discovered at that time but they suggested that okay the particle can be categorized according to some very according to some symmetry according to some basic laws so they can categorize like similar properties of the quantum number or similar charges so they are arranged all the particle but this particle was missing at that time this particle was not discovered using this classification using this characterization using this uh, uh, this arrangement of the particle in a in a uh, in a very beautiful symmetry symmetry they propose that there should be a particle here and the 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 the, the charge should be minus and the strangeness quantum uh, quantum number should be minus 3 and uh, 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 and in the later stage we understand that the omega uh, omega minus discovered in the experiment so what i am saying that okay people like in like in the periodic table in the chem uh, for the uh, chemical elements for the atoms we can as we can arrange we can categorize we can classify particles in a 
very unique way. Unique way in the sense what I'm saying that this is based on some group theory. So this is some pure mathematical group theory that we apply here. So that led to, that gives to new thinking that, okay, there should be some new particles. So there should be some other particles. That's, that led to the discovery of the omega minus. This is the, and also one thing I want to say that every particles, see how beauty is. So every particle is, we can arrange in some hexagon or decuplet, octet. This is some very beautifully we can arrange, like in the chemical elements in the periodic table, we, we can arrange the particles in a, in a specific uh, for, in a specific shape. Okay, so from this, people understand that, okay, there is some, should there should be, if, if we can arrange the particles like this, it is not, there should be some difference between this, if this, they, they, they are same, there should be some difference that, that can be separate, that can separate the particle like this in this structure, in this format. So, the Murray Gelman, and the, the, in 1961, and the, the Murray Gelman is a famous scientist. He was supposed, he was the proposing the, the idea of the Cox, and the, the, the Newman introduced the, the classification of the Cork model. In this Cork model, they were suggesting that, they're suggesting that hadrons, hadrons means protons, neutrons, like pions, kions, all other particles, that shouldn't be fundamental. That shouldn't be elementary particle, but instead it should be some composite of the other smaller particle. At that time, they suppose that they, they are giving some name quarks and anti quarks also, anti quarks. And this is some according to their theory only, but later in the experiment, in 1968, a deep inelastic scattering experiment, DIS experiment, deep inelastic scattering experiment at SLAC at the US, showed that proton contained much smaller and point-like object, not the elementary, not an elementary particle. But it means so far until this until this years, until this year, the the scientists or the people who are believing that proton can be an elementary. It can be the building blocks of all the objects in the universe, but the experiment shows that in different way. So people start to think in a different way also. That is the way, that's why the, the, he, they proposed Cork model and uh, uh, it was successful in that, in that uh, level, in that way. So why Cork? Why the smaller particle inside the neutrons or any hadrons? Uh, before coming to this, I will show you one more thing. Okay, I will, I will, I will. First, I will see this slide. So, testing theory. We have a theory. We have a model. We have a hypothesis. Like uh, I, I, I just uh, uh, talked about the the Cork model, and the hypothesis. That's uh, the the Gelman and the Newman. These two great scientists were proposing that uh, there should be some smaller particle inside the, the protons and inside the hadrons, any hadrons. But why they are suggesting? Is it uh, is it uh, is it uh, uh, how is it trustful? Uh, how how we can we, we can take that arguments their proposal? So we have to do some test. So to test theory. <coughs> This is, has to do some experiment using the knowledge what they have to find out what they don't know. So in our particle physics, particle accelerators, we will come to that, what is actually, how they are working, is, is a powerful tool to study the structure of a particle. It's like that. Two particles colliding each other and they are, each, they are interacting the particles inside the each particles and the axle the, the main or the idea is principally is the, the accelerators can resolve or that can enter very small structure or resolve the very small structure by colliding the particle with the high momentum and short wavelength so according to the de Broglie principle that you know 
So the wavelength of the each particles or incoming particle or any object can be reduced by the, or it is inversely proportional to the momentum of that particles. This is Planck's constant. It means that the size of, the size of an object is inversely proportional to the momentum or energy of that uh, particles. So using the Prisk principle, let us see. See, okay. We know the alpha nucleus scattering, like a gold foil experiment by the Rutherford. So in that experiment, you see that, okay, alpha nucleus scattering. So the alpha energy is around 10 MeV. That's a 10 mega electron volt. So at the use, uh, using, uh, if it is that, uh, the incoming alpha particle energy like this, the wavelength will be around 5 Fermi meter FM. So Fermi, then it means that uh, alpha particle has this much uh, the wavelength. So usually the nucleus is 1 Fermi, right? So it means that alpha particle can resolve the inside inside the structure. It can't go inside, it can't look inside what is inside the nucleus because alpha particle size is five for me and the nucleus is one for me. So one has to reduce the wavelength or the size of the alpha particle or the incoming particle so that it can go inside the target, like here the nucleus, so that it can go, it can search, it can understand, it can, the, the, the particle in the, in, in, interact inside the particle. So let us come to this stage, like uh, electron nuclear scattering. So in that case, here the alpha is incoming, here the electron is incoming, and uh, scattering with the nucleus. And uh, okay, one one thing I want to say that okay, because it can't go, it can't go uh, inside the nucleus, it can't look inside the nucleus. There, it will interact only considering that nucleus is a point particle. So that's why Rutherford discovered that there should be some dense center inside each atom but he could not at that you during the using that experiment one cannot say okay nucleus is consist of some protons or other particles because the wavelength was uh, high it can go in it can resolve the nucleus or it can go inside the, the nucleus so while uh, let, let us uh, this one okay Okay, here, here the example. Electron nuclear scattering. So 100 mega electron volt means the ele incoming electron has 100 mega electron volts. According to this, the wavelength of the electron is 12 for me. So it can go inside this. It can still interacting with the, 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 the nucleus as a point. But when we increase like one giga electron volt the the wavelength is like 1.2 fermi it means it is more or less comparable with the, the size of the proton the wavelength of the proton then it can go inside the proton it can interact the inside particles of the proton so that's why the cross section drops in this case see if it is the point particle interaction if it is if it is means if the nucleus is point particle, the, the, the graph should be like this. But see, there is an angle is something larger. It means that the, the target here, the nucleus, here the target is proton, is something structured, something inside it. That is why the, the, there is a large angle uh, 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 scattering is, is happening in this case. So now we understand that, okay, there should be something inside the proton. It is not the proton is not, it is not the proton that is elementary or the fundamental, something there, there is uh, inside it. So proton is structured. So yes, that, that, that this, this is the case from, this is the evidence from the experiment. At the same time that uh, Gelman and Muran, uh, Gelman and uh, Yuvalman was proposing some plot model suggesting that okay these protons and hadrons should be composed of some smaller particles. Yes. So now we want to test the theory. How we are testing the theory? As I told you, the particle accelerators are powerful tool 
to study the power of the structure of the particles. So as I said, this is like a more explanation. See, we, suppose we want to suppose we want to study about the cork or cork structure. If the if the electron wavelength, if the size of the electron is this much, it can it can it can explore the structure of the cork. It can go inside cork. So the electron wavelength or the size of the the electron should be very very small or comparable with the size of the cork. That's the idea in the accelerator. So all, we know that all the particles have wave properties. So physics can use particles as their props. Means as the, in this case, in this case, the prop means electron can use to to understand the structure of the pro proton. Now the electron can you electron can be used to understand the structure of the cox. So if you increase the energy, we can reduce the size of the incoming particle we can reduce the size of the, uh, uh, the we can reduce the wavelength of the incoming particle so that it can enter the target it can search inside target that was that is the idea in the in the that's the principle uh, used in the particular accelerator so this is the some graph that shows that how the momentum increased according then the, how the wavelength is increasing okay so from the experiment, we understood that uh, there is a, so in a different experiment we, from the astronomy, astro astrophysics and uh, chemistry, physics, we understand that we have a different object with a different size from huge different in that scale, like a galaxy, starting from the galaxy, then the, some, that is mainly it is the mainly tested with some telescope in different places of the world and the, you have we have the milky way other solar system then we have the animal this much says that we just observe using that uh, our eye then cell we can use microscope then uh, electron microscope using the electron microscope we can understand we can study about the the, uh, the atoms or the, the the similar object in that size and beyond the nucleus we have to be we have to have something new techniques that's that's where we are using the accelerator accelerator means basically it is accelerating the momentum basically the accelerating momentum means it it can reduce the size of the incoming particle here the incoming particle suppose electron we can reduce the incoming the wavelength of this then it can go inside this cork so that it can we can understand the structure of the cox. Yes, so from the experiment, we understood that there are two types of point-like constants. One is the one we can say leptons and cox. And in the leptons, we have the electron, muon, and tau. And uh, this, and uh, the neutrinos, neutrino, the electron neutrino and muon neutrino and the tau neutrino. And in the quark, we have the up quark, down quark, down quark and the strains, top and bottom. So, as I told here, people were suggesting that there should be something inside the quark model. And from the experiment, it is also shown that there should be some, uh, some smaller particle inside each hadron or each neutrons and protons. And later experiment, it is the confirmation that the smaller particle that we are calling the quarks. And later we understood that there's, there is another particle that the gluons, we will come to that stage. And there is some force carrier. What is force carrier? So we will come to force carrier later. Yes, matter and antimatter. As we saw here, as we have seen here that um, then we have the electrons, muons, and the tau. Similarly, we have the quarks. So every matter, every matter means that particle will be the, 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 using that particle, every object 
in the universe is built. So that is why we are calling matter. So every type of matter particles we have one, there is there also exists a corresponding antimatter particle. So we have up quarks. So, so we, similarly we have anti up quarks. So similarly we have top quarks. So in that case we have anti top. So every particle in this case we have a particle and antiparticle, uh, or a matter and antimatter. So this is uh, we have the very so many experimental evidence for the matter or antimatter or for the particle and antiparticle. So this is one of the old photo that's a, from the uh, bubble chamber experiment. So mainly the, to separate the particles and antiparticles or uh, the magnetic, magnetic field is used to separate these particles. So the magnetic field in this chamber, Sir? yes, please. Yeah, ask one doubt. Yeah, please. Uh, what is that USCD under the picture of uh, the last slide? Which line? This one? Yeah, this one. UDCH. What is that UDCH? Ah, okay. Okay, sure. Okay, what I am saying that uh, uh, so far we have, I will explain some category here, yes. We have a particle categories here, that's a we can, we can uh, categorize in a different broad way, like in the largely we can leptons and hadrons. So leptons basically the electrons, that's a electron, muon and neutrino, and the hadrons, at that time only hadrons was uh, in the, like we, we say everything is like the hadron, non, uh, not separately mesons and baryons. But we, later we discovered that there is some quark structure inside hadrons. Then we separately, uh, we separate the hadrons into mesons and baryons. Meson basically, uh, one set of two, two quarks. Baryons basically, they, uh, the, the bond set of uh, three quarks. So how many kinds of, how many flavors of quarks? That's what it says. There are six kinds of quarks, six flavors of quarks, that is up. This is the, the, the some name it is uh, the scientist given. Up quark, U, and down quark. And uh, it has some different properties like uh, the, the charges and they're different from the, this one. Then the, the charm quarks and the strange quark. This is the top, top quarks and the bottom one. So these are the six flavors of the box. Flavors means six kinds of the box. So here the charge is different from, uh, each charge is different from others. And uh, mostly the, the, all the box have fractured, fractional charges. That's the fractional charge means not unit charges. Fractional charge is in the up quark charge is two by three. Down quark is minus uh, two by three. Then the charm quark also, then star, the strange also, this is a minus one by three, etc. So all the quark has, all the quark, uh, quarks have different fractional charges and the quantum also. Oh, I think this is the question, right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Now, let us see. Okay. Uh, we, we were in the slides. So using the magnetic field, we can separate the particles and antiparticles. So clearly we can see that. So this is the, see how the things see that, that, that when the particle like uh, two protons collide at very high energy. So as I said, if it is a proton is very, very high energy interaction scattering, it can go inside the proton. It can in the interact inside the proton. Then it means that the, 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 now the scattering, now the interaction is between the quarks in each protons, each proton, okay? So, from that, this new particle is produced. New particle means new mesons, new hadrons, new baryon is produced. So, how will you detect? How will you understand that particles? So, in the, so one of the method earlier, it was using that bubble chamber. So this is some new, uh, some uh, some specific liquid was used. 
and while in while the colliding while the particle production they will take the picture using the this photo uh, the illumination so that we can see that see some the particle is going and antiparticle is in different way so one of the example is, is that see different uh, the electron and positron pair is produced and it is going it is deflected in the magnetic field in this side and the anti electron that's a positron is deflected in this side so similarly we can see many other particles many other uh, the, the matter and antimatter or particle and the particle so in this what i mean that uh, in this in the, we have the basic fundament the, the, the basic construct of particle like leptons and quarks and we have a force carriers that's i will come to later and apart from that we have the every particle we have an anti particle and uh, every matter we have the anti matter so basically this is we have the media experimental evidence we can uh, separate we can also separate the the, the particles and, and particles in the experiment now now the other question is okay we have so many particles we have so many the bond state like bond state of the new the bond one of the bond state is the proton proton is a bond state of three quarks and uh, pion is a bond state of two quarks so but how all the all the quarks are coming in the two, coming together what holds all all all, all these quarks in inside a small inside a small size there should be some force there should be some uh, pressure from outside so all the there are apparently many types of forces in the universe they are all based on on four fundamental forces we know the gravity the gravitational force we know the electromagnetic force but there is there are some other weak force and strong force strong force so if i comment on the strong force strong force initially it was suggested when people were thinking of about the nuclear structure people were thinking of okay so far we know that gravitation force because two massive body two massive bodies can uh, always attract also we know the electromagnetic force that's also very well defined from the maxwell equations and later when the nucleus uh, discovered and the proton also uh, the, uh, discovered and uh, so many experiment was performed now people were thinking that how the proton so many like uh, is supposed in the in the nucleus of the lead uh, around how many protons 92 and in the gold atoms around 70 70 protons how the all the proton with the same charge it can be it can be existed in a small size suppose in the small small size of nucleus because of the because the, there is a high repulsion from the electromagnetic force so at that time it was suggested that there should be some other force that should be very stronger than electromagnetic force that bind together all this proton so that it can stable it can be stable inside the nucleus so it was suggested uh, ikawa then uh, at that time it was suggesting that the, uh, the the there was some exchanging particles we will come to that point so anyway we have the four some four, four fundamental forces gravity electromagnetic uh, the force and the strong and the weak force the strong and weak force only act very short distance what mean what i mean is short short distance short distance means you know the gravitation force and gravity uh, the electromagnetic force it is always it's a it's a, it's a is the the range of this force is infinite right although it is if i okay if the if the, if the ob, two object like two charged particles if it is at this distance there should be some some uh, some significant electromagnetic force between these two charged particles but if i increase the distance the electromagnetic force between these two charged particles will decrease but if i increase the distance it finally decreases uh, very in a small value but it is always there is some small or least value of some force that's also saying in the same case for the gravitational but for this strong and weak force it is very short means after some distance so strong force only maximum is uh, one to two for me so beyond that this force can be valid this this cannot this force can 
act anything. It, it, it can't do anything. So that's why it's a four very short distance are responsible for the nuclei together, are responsible for the all the protons uh, holding inside the nucleus. Also, you know that the electromagnetic force act there between the electro uh, electric charges and the gravitation force acting acts between the masses. Okay, so, but how the force acting, how the, 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 this interaction, all this gravitational or electromagnetic force, all this force act other particles. It, you know, it's not like physical support or it's not like physical uh, interaction, it's not like physical binding. So how they interact? We know that uh, from the magnetism and the gravitation, how the force is acting. So he, in this case, that the, there is a, the, 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 the between two magnets, the, the electromagnetic field is is interacting between these two. But how? Anyway, fundamentally, what happens here? So that's the question. A force is not just something that that happens to a particles. It is a thing which passes between two particles. Means there is some particle is exchanging between these two because of the exchange there is some bonding there is some interaction there is some force experience each other so it's like that this magnet exchange some particle to this this magnet exchange this so that bonding is developed that bonding developed into force each other experience each other so this is this is the way two particles, two object, or any massive bodies, or everything in the universe is interacting. So that's why I'm saying I wrote here the force carrier. We have the four some fundamental constraints like the leptons and their anti-neutrinos, the sorry, their neutrinos, and we have quarks, and we have the force carrier that will be interacting, that will be exchanged between these two, between these quarks, between these uh, leptons. So, it is like that, that is an unseen effect. The, how the force carrier, is a, one good example is that we have a two, the two people uh, standing in the boards and one person is throwing some baseball to the other person. It's like that they are receiving their the, the, they are exchanging force carrier to the, this person. Then, you see, while receiving this force carrier, in this case the ball, it will, he will experience some force. Then he will move back. So similarly, all the forces in the universe is because of the exchange of the some force carrier particles. So this is we have the uh, the experimentally. Uh, then in, we have this uh, proposal and a dif different type of particle okay so this is uh, one of the good example how the force carrier is acting in each uh, in each interaction so summary of the interaction force is for the gravi gravitational force we have the force carrier the, the force carrier is graviton it is not yet discovered it is not uh, yet observed but it is uh, uh, the, it is very well defined in the theory, and we have weak and electromagnetic interaction. So how the way? What is weak interaction? Weak interaction. Why it is calling weak interaction? So basically, weak interaction is involved with the neutrino. In that case, the why it is weak. One one reason is that. It is very short range, as I said before. Short range means the interaction or the range of that weak force or the range of that force is very, very small. It's not like the electromagnetic force. It's not like a gravitational force because in the gravitational electromagnetic force, the range is too large. Okay. So in the weak force, also another thing is it is the time delay. Like in the neutrino, the, the beta decay. Beta decay is one of the examples of the weak force or weak interaction. 
in that case neutrino is involved all the all the interaction all the decays that involves the decay uh, that involves the neutrino is uh, because of the weak force means it uh, it delays that interaction also it is very short range that's why it's weak why it is weak means that the force carrier is too the too massive the force carrier is the larger and massive particles because of the, the force carrier is too massive it can go it can go to far it can go to, to, to the, the, at far distance that's why it's a short this short range force the, the 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 here the force carrier is wz bosons we say bosons and in the electromagnetic force we know that what is the force carrier that is a photon and in the song interaction the force carrier is gluon so we know the photon but maybe we understand we 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 may study it in the earlier classes at least the name of the, the some bosons so all the force carrier are bosons all the force carriers here in this case graviton in this case sub wz bosons and in this case photons you know the photon is massless that's why it's a long range it's a infinite range of uh, force and gluon also uh, massless but it is short range because of the this uh, uh, it, it's a color charge interaction so how it is interacting gravitation is interacting with all because all the massive board all the mass, massive objects can uh, can be affected by the gravitational force what are what are the weak and electromagnetic force it, it will interact with quarks and leptons here the electromagnetic is all the charge all the charged particles and the strong interaction only with the quarks and gluons not other particles like a strong strong force will not affect electrons will not affect neutrinos okay okay so far we have the elementary particle from different experiment as i suggested before we have 48 matter and 13 force carriers where is that uh, slide sorry I missed one slide. Yes, so far we have, this is the summary of the interaction force. So, so far we have the elementary particle is, this is like a, periodic table for the fundamental particle for the elementary particles so as i said this is up quark down quark charm quark top quark strange quarks bottom quarks and uh, you can see the some mass and the, the the this one the charge of the each quarks also as i as i said each particle every each particle in the universe has its antiparticle we can see the antiparticle in this structure. So we have the leptons here, electrons, muon, tau, and the corresponding neutrinos, and their uh, antiparticles, and their uh, corresponding anti-neutrinos. So, so far, we have 61 particles all from all together. And that's a 48 matter and 13 uh, force carriers. So basically, so, why it is 48 matter? It is saying that only 6, uh, 24 and something, some below 30. So, it is because of the fact that, it is because of the fact that we have a color chart for the, all the fundamental particle like uh, the like quarks and gluons we have the color uh, color chart so each color chart is different for different part different quarks uh, different quarks and gluons and here is the is the, the this is the in the red we have the the force carriers as i said for the strong interaction gluons for the electromagnetic it is photon and uh, for the weak force it is a z boson 
and the W plus and W minus boson. And also we have the famous Higgs boson also. Is this is the 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 real reason for the the mass mass generation in elementary particle. It gives uh, this Higgs field uh, is convey exchange the mass to the other particle. So so far we have 48 matter and 13 force carriers. What it means matter means so matter means using this elementary particle all the matter are built whether it is stable or unstable all the particle matter particle like the protons neutrons kions pions all other particles were were built using this matter and these are the their corresponding respective force carriers that bound together the that binds the quarks and I bind together some leptons. Okay. So the interesting thing, thing, thing is that all these particles were, most of the particles were suggested by or predicted by in a famous, in a well defined theory that we are calling standard model theory. This standard model is very well tested very well uh, it, it is suggesting it was suggesting uh, many particles and uh, according to the, the, the this theory many particle was discovered so the standard model theory predicted most of the particle most of the elementary particles were discovered in high energy accelerator as i told you before like in cern lsc slack in us bnla in us and the pupil scientists were working hard to find the study and to understand the fundamental constraints to understand the nature of the matter. And it is still going on. It is it will still will forward. So this is just uh, I I will show you how the the things are changes from the how the sizes uh, and then the, how the different um, how will I say exper experimentally verified things going up. From the virus, from molecules and atoms, then nucleus, then protons. These were the, some developments of developments of the different stages of the scientific development, uh, scientific uh, discoveries. And uh, from the nucleus, we reach the proton. From the noto, from the proton, we we are reaching here. We are reaching means so far the uh, so fundamental or elementary particles, quarks and uh, leptons. And uh, yes. As I said, the accelerator is using accelerator is a powerful tool. It's like a microscope. Using microscope, we can amplify the smaller object into a bigger in a bigger size, right? The similar way in the in the in a similar approach, we say that we can understand, we can study the structure of the smaller object or a smaller particle using the accelerators using the, the the same principle that uh, de, de Broglie the, the wavelength principle so we use particle accelerators to increase the momentum of the probing particle probing particle means the incoming particle thus decreasing its wavelength so so that we can understand so so far the quark size is around 10 to the power minus 18 10 to the power minus 18 see so from the develop to the, the cell is around uh, micro micrometer 10 to the minus 6 so using other uh, equipments electron microscope we can see the smaller the object like 10 to the minus 8 but the accelerator use using accelerator high energy accelerator we can understand the very smaller like 10 to the power minus 18 up to 18 so far we can understand the the smaller six of the particles Okay, let us see how the LSC accelerator is working. See the now the the okay, I will show you here. Oh sorry. The proton is is going into the the beam. The proton first accelerated in the beam. Here the proton entered. The the proton is ionized from the hydrogen or in any other atoms like uh, other atoms. We separated the protons 
and we eject we injected the protons in a beam like this and we then accelerate accelerate means we increase the increase the, the speed of the momentum of the, uh, the the protons beam protons particles see using this we can increase the there are thousand bunches of the protons now the using inject the, the the it will rotate here then it will increase its momentum then the proton will, will come to here then again we will rotate the protons beam the bunch of beams in each bunch around billions of protons billions of protons in each bunch in each group then we increase the momentum and energy of the proton so that so that we as we said if you increase energy the wavelength will be reduced so that it can go the same it, it can interact with the small the inside particles now that this is lsc lsc tunnel under the earth around 27 kilometer the circumference around 27 kilometer the circumference we have four experiment to understand to detect to collect a particle that produced in the from the collision of the protons we have four experiment that is cms alice atlas and lscb see the particle is, is coming through this beam Showing something else. So the two beams, two protons are colliding here, and uh, new particle is producing. It is collected some detector in the experiment. Okay, see the new particle is produced. How the particle is produced? As I said, it is like uh, the from the Einstein primus energy, the energy mass equation, E sum m c square. If you have large, if you have a high energy particles, that energy, that relativistic kinetic energy will be converted into the production of new mass, new particles. That's the principle is is used here. Okay. So then the it is collecting in the detector. okay so this is the one of the detector as i is, uh, as we just uh, as we have seen just in the last video so this is the size of the detector you can see some human being here so we have a very very big size detector to collect all the final state of the particle that is produced in the in the proton proton scattering or any other uh, uh, electron electron scattering so this much uh, uh, is effort. Like uh, we have, we have to have understand the uh, very sophisticated electronics readout, and uh, we have to have some uh, the very precise understanding of the each cross section of the the the, uh, the the particle interaction in the with the material, so that we can collect all the particle produced in the in the in the collision. So this is like a joy. Uh, once it is, this is the real happening in the in the experiment in the CERN. Once it is, where they started the experiment, they collect the data, they collect the particles in the detector. Then we they understand. Okay, they when they feel that okay, this is we we got real particle. 
then they, they, the people are enjoying like this. So this is still continuous. This is just happened in yesterday. LSCB, I told you in the CERN, in the LSCB we have four experiments. One of the experiment is LSCB discovers a new type of tractacock. Means so far we have bond state of two or three cocks. That's a bond state of two cocks called mesons, mesons, and bond state of three cocks called baryons, like protons and neutrons. Now, the, this was suggesting this exotic, this unstable particle uh, some, uh, some years back. There's, there is a possibility that for the bond state of four cocks, and it was just discovered yesterday at LSC in this LSCB experiment. So the people are still continues their hard work, their search, their understanding uh, the, to understand the, the nature of the, the fundamental particles. So curiosity still continues. Do you want to be part of it? So with this, I end my talk here. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Abdullah. Thank, Thank you, you Abdullah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can hear, sir. Okay, okay. You, uh, principal, sir, please continue. So, it is the time for the interaction. In the students got a wide and uh, very good explanation from Abdullah Abdul Salam. So, please. I hope that the students got an international experience, just exposure. So you can just ask or you can share or you can have any doubt or you can add or something, anything. Just students or teachers or anybody. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. I'm, I'm Jasmine. I'm a former physics faculty of Viras. In 2012-13, I was there. Uh, sir, my question is, out of curiosity, I'm asking, uh, do you believe like in future, the quark will also undergo a splitting? <laughs> yeah, good question. Thank you, sir. Yes. Uh, I personally, I believe. But uh, the, until so far, there is no evidence for that. But it is... We have a, I will say, logically, rationally, we can believe that while we're discovering the, the nucleus, at that time that the people were thinking that nucleus is something fundamental and elementary. And later the, the technology advanced and the experiment, new understanding is uh, the people could understand it. Uh, could, could, can understand more from other experiment. Now they realize that no, the nucleus is not, then proton, then people were thinking of the proton were, uh, proton was the fundamental particle. Now then they evolved understanding that they evolved from uh, the understanding from different experiment that every particle is structured. Every particle is something have some, some other smaller particle inside but it is not experimental evidence but rationally we can say we can say okay it, it could be in future other experiment and uh, it could it could give some new light on the structure of the cox yes and I, I believe i personally believe it should be okay we should also believe like that so. yes also other of uh, uh, other thing is that one of the force carrier is photons and uh, the photon, as I said, photon is the boson, one of the elementary, we consider one of the elementary particle, but there are, uh, how let's say, some significant studies were performed on photon that photon has something inside, especially uh, 
from the mixture of some electrons and positrons. Yes. So the floor is open for all. So they can invent, right? The remaining things. Yes, sir. Sure. Okay, carry on. Malayalam film joy kya? You want one sir? Yeah, if any students want to ask any question in any language, it's not a problem. I think it's not a problem. We want sir. all the plans. Okay, sir, please. Good evening, sir. Yes. Yes, please. you can switch on the video before calling. That will be better if you can. Yes. Yes. Better. I'm Fatima Piti, and uh, I'm from I'm second year student. So my question is: uh, We have already heard that uh, the teleportation of different particles, small particles, to different countries. So my question is: In future, it is possible for the teleportation of human being or some spaceship? I can't hear you well. Sorry. Fatima, can you can you? Sir, uh, I have uh, I have seen in many videos that uh, the teleportation of some smallest particles like proton to some countries. So, in future, it is possible that uh, the teleportation of some spaceship or human being it is possible because I have seen some videos. That is why. But my, I can't hear you, sir. Can you hear? Ah, uh, now it's okay. Better, yes. Okay, yeah. sir. Uh, we have already uh, seen some video that uh, the teleportation of some smallest particles, like proton, had uh, already teleported to different parts of country. So, in future, is it possible for the teleportation of a spaceship or human being? Ah, yes. Okay. Because so, I have seen video, that's why I'm asking. Sorry? Because uh, uh, yesterday I have seen some video that uh, in future it is possible. For, yeah, that's uh, right. If you're controlling I, that room. Yeah. yeah, it's possible in the sense that, uh, see, uh, so far, the, as I told, we to understand the inner structure, the, the basic or the, the, the fundamental constants, we need very high energy accelerators. So uh, in the future, I already, de already declared that at, at least in the Europe and the Europe agency, the CERN, CERN and at, uh, some from the US also. So far the energy level is maximum 10 tera electron volt. That is upgraded, that will be upgraded to 100. It means that we can go into deep into the very small smaller particles of uh, fox and other smaller object so it will definitely it will uh, give the new new lights new understanding uh, for the, the, the fundamental particle yes okay sir Thank you for the information. Okay, others. And we have enough, uh, means six more minutes are remaining. Our uh, vice chairman and uh, the father of Abdullah is already joined. So he can say some words. Salam, sir, please. Unmute it. Un please un unmute it. Unmute it. Salam, sir. Okay. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. 
I'm very happy to see you all with my son. <laughs> Anyhow, it's a nice and very blessed things. I don't know how far effective was the lecture, uh, the series, the uh, seminar. I was only in between few minutes attended this program. In, anyhow, I think the students might have got some points. Wish you all, and I wish this program a success, and for Abdullah especially, very thankful to accept our invitation for our URAS. I think his uh, uh, former college, Prince faculty, teacher also with us, Professor Ramachandran. So you can also give some words, I think. May God bless us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Both of, both of them shared their experiences. Thank Professor you. and student, both of them shared. So that will be a great inspiration and motivation for our students also. Definitely. definitely. Yes, uh, I want to add the, uh, regarding this. Uh, you have a good opportunity uh, or you have a good, great high occasion that Professor Ramachandran uh, is with you. Is, uh, really, I'm just I'm not just saying some uh, general words. It's a real, really, you have to use him. You have to explore him. He has a, a good capability in physics and a good knowledge and a sincere knowledge. Yes, please explore him, please, all the students. Inshallah, we will use him very well. Okay. <laughs> it will be too much <laughs> from Abdullah anyway. <laughs> one, one, one thing I want to tell, uh, tell is that uh, uh, initially we were planning to conduct the webinar yesterday, but one day after we have got a new knowledge. It is uh, uh, the Terra Quark. That is a, uh, just a new, uh, newly born thing. So that, that much novel idea we have got. So one advantage we have got uh, with, with this postponement is that uh, Abdullah has shared the latest as far as the particle physics is concerned. And many congrats for that, for sharing with us many thanks also. And uh, <laughs> all the other things uh, we can see what we are going to see. <laughs> Things that we need not explain, okay. Okay, my dear students, means you can ask some more questions. Hello, sir. Yeah. Hello, I am Rasmiya. Yes. Actually, I am not an expert in physics. I am MTech in computer science, uh, but I have a curiosity. Uh, sir, yes, yes, can yes. you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, yes. Uh, sir, how can we isolate protons? I like, uh, is it bound in the nucleus? That's a good question, yes. So, in the experiment, uh, we... Uh, in experiment, usually we have uh, different species used to accelerate, to collide the particles. Okay. So, so to collide the particles. So one of the species, it's a proton, as you asked. Other thing is electrons also we are using to interacting the, the this one. Also, the sometimes ions also used. So your question is how we are isolating the protons from the nucleus. So to in the in the proton-proton interaction, we mostly use hydrogen atoms. So to strip once to strip the electron, you just uh, 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 give them some more energy, then it will be ionized. You know the the okay. You are from the M tech background. So we can say that, so it is well defined that how if you give some specific, in this case of the uh, hydrogen, if you give some 13.6 electron volt, you can 
separate electron from the hydrogen atom so what is remaining if you separate the electron from the hydrogen atom that's a proton only right so in the proton proton interaction in the proton proton scattering we use just to separate the electron just strips out the electron using some the high using some ionization method okay so okay. this is easy so in a, but in the case of lead ion there are some some ions also colliding and scattering in this so in the case of lead ion that is a little difficult to separate so the 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 ions ions means basically the nucleus all other the, the electrons we have to strip out that's a some um, difficult uh, method yes okay. i hope the answer is correct yeah. no thank you sir thank you. Okay, please. Yeah, sir, I'm going to get it. Let me get the answer. I'm going to be able to do it. Parmaavati. Sir. Yes, please. Ah. Um. ടൈം ട്രാവലിംഗ് പോസിബിൾ ആണെന്ന് പറയുന്നില്ലേ അപ്പൊ നമുക്ക് പാസ്റ്റിലേക്ക് പോകണമെങ്കിൽ ഗ്രാൻഡ് ഫാദർ പാരഡോക്സ എന്നിട്ട് എന്തോ തിയറി സോൾവ് ചെയ്യണോ എന്ന് പറയും ആ തിയറി എന്താ അതൊന്ന് പറഞ്ഞോ എങ്ങനെ മനസ്സിലായില്ല നോടി എന്താണ് ടൈം ട്രാവലിംഗ് പോസിബിൾ ആണെന്ന് പറയുന്നു അപ്പൊ അത് പാസ്റ്റിലേക്ക് പോവാ ഫ്യൂച്ചറിലേക്ക് പോവാ പാസ്റ്റിലേക്ക് പോണെങ്കിൽ ഗ്രാൻഡ്ഫാദർ <laughs> in the like uh, if it is defined in the uh, uh, phase plus time for uh, 3 plus 1 coordinates then we can say that okay it is like equal food we take the space and time but if it is in the other like the the, the time is unidirectional unidirectional means we have the three phase coordinates time is always uh, going forward not backward so in that said that's a newtonian um, approach the other approach is space time the space uh, coordinates and the time coordinates it is considered as a equal part and recently there is a development in the time reversal and suggesting that it can go in some universe backward but in that state it is considered that uh, time is not relative time is absolute there is two terms what what is saying that time is relative absolute in the sense uh, relative means basically it is uh, the whatever we are measuring the the time that is changes in different coordinates in different frame of reference and time absolute means that is same for all all observer in in all uh, in all frame of reference so recently the, the, some maybe some one month back there was a suggestion trying travel uh, trying uh, the reversal can happen in some universe other than the our universe but that is also purely theory other multi universe also purely theory because we don't have such evidence so that i don't know how to uh, <laughs> solve this paradox maybe professor ramachandran can uh, sir can, can say uh, something say, say something more so please unmute your sorry i don't i am not that much familiar with the concept and uh, i think that is uh, i think the uh, uh, something uh, imaginary thing uh, i think it is not still realized some concepts are there but um, i think uh, that is still developing and i don't have much 
more ideas on that aspect you can get some ideas you can directly get it from google uh, by googling and uh, wikipedia can give you some basic ideas that's all what i can say about it salam sir ande parayunnendengile adu unmute cheyana Uh, the question Fatima is a very interesting question, mm -hmm. but uh, is, 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 this is all depend upon how the, the uh, Fatima. How, are you hearing right? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying that the, all the time and the space. This is very fundamental concept in the earlier time until today. Also, there is some difference uh, in the definition of the time and space. even in the science and plus philosophy so mostly even then the, that's why the, the, there there is a huge difference in the concept of time and space in the newton uh, according to newton according to the einstein and some other uh, uh, scientists also so, so but it's a good concept you can carry on you can carry out some your studies your research in that field okay thank you once if can sir. once if we can retrieve the time then everything will change right yeah that, that's a how you define that's a fundamental question how you define the time so there are different theory but uh, the theory means so far we agree on that space and time okay at least we are now three coordinates x y z yeah and time and in the newtonian mechanics it says that time is always unidirectional means always forward one is as you said one it is active it is not going back but if you take time as a space coordinates time as a as a same as space x y z t if i take like that we will get a flat universe we will get the flat everything there is no particular direction for the time it's like the one coordinate in the space so in that says in that sense we can go back yeah maybe me if we if we talk about philosophically i think it is possible because sometimes once yeah, are the death the uh, the almighty allah make it means uh, retrieve all the things back so you can see everything that's why i'm saying there is a still some gap in the understanding of the space to so be according to the science also according to the the the, the philosophy of science also so that's why i'm uh, uh, saying to the pratima you have as if you have interest then carry uh, um, go ahead carry on on that field that's a good question and motivating question fatima keep it up thank you sir so if any others are there Commandant sir, if no more questions, sir, we can wind up, right? Sir, please unmute. Unmute, sir. Sir. Uh... Oh yes, yes. Yes. ഒരു ഒരു ക്വസ്റ്റിനും കൂടി ഉണ്ട് അത് സർ ഇന്നടുത്ത ടോപ്പിക് ആയിട്ട് റിലേറ്റഡ് ആണോ എന്ന് എനിക്കറിയില്ല പക്ഷെ കൊറേ നാളെ ചോദിക്കണോ വിചാരിക്കുന്നു ആരോടെങ്കിലും ഇത് നല്ല ഓപ്പർച്യൂണിറ്റി ആണെന്ന് ഞാൻ വിചാരിക്കുന്നു ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഇതാണ് ഈ പാരലൽ യൂണിവേഴ്സ് സത്യമാണോ അത് ഫിസിക്സിൽ അത് പ്രൂവ് ആയിട്ടുണ്ടോ i will give you what i know okay parallel universe multi universe possible anum eh illi evide irunnu vachale eh ingane verunnale okay eh nammale 
നമ്മൾ നമ്മൾ യൂണിവേഴ്സ് യൂണിവേഴ്സിലെല്ലാം സ്റ്റാർസ് ഗാലക്സി അതൊക്കെ നമുക്ക് മനസ്സിലായി ഇത് ഇതെങ്ങനെ ഉണ്ടാക്കപ്പെട്ടെന്നൊക്കെ സ്റ്റാർസ് ഗാലക്സി ഒക്കെ ഐസ് മെയ്ഡ് ഓഫ് ഓഫ് സം ആറ്റംസ് മോണിക്യൂൾസ് ദൻ പ്രോട്ടോൺസ് ദാറ്റ്സ് ഓക്കെ വി അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് ദ പ്രോബ്ലം ഈസ് ദാറ്റ് വെൻ വി ദ എക്സ്പെസി ദ എക്സ്പാൻഷൻ എക്സ്പെസലി എക്സ്പാൻഷൻ ഈ പിന്നെ യൂണിവേഴ്സ് എക്സ്പാൻഷൻ ഉണ്ടല്ലോ അതിലാണ് ഒരു പ്രോബ്ലം വരുന്നത് രണ്ടാമത് ഈവൻ ദ മിൽക്കി വേല് നമ്മളുടെ പിന്നെ ഈവൻ ദ നമ്മുടെ സോളാർ സിസ്റ്റം മിൽക്കി വേല് റൊട്ടേറ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്നതും അവിടെ ഒരു പ്രോബ്ലം പ്രോബ്ലം എന്ന് വെച്ചാല് സാധാരണ രീതിയിൽ ഒരു റൊട്ടേഷൻ റേറ്റ് ഉണ്ട് ഒരു റൊട്ടേഷൻ റേറ്റ് ആ റേറ്റിനേക്കാൾ അധികമാണ് ഇത് റൊട്ടേറ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് സാധാരണ അക്കോർഡിംഗ് ടു ദ ലോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അക്കോർഡിംഗ് ടു ദ കെപ്ലസ് ലോ കെപ്ലസ് ലോ മീൻസ് യൂസിംഗ് ദ ഗ്രാവിറ്റേഷനൽ അത് എഫക്ട് ഓഫ് ഓൾ അതർ ഗാലക്സീസ് ഓൾ അതർ സ്റ്റാർസ് സറൗണ്ടിങ് ദ സോളാർ സിസ്റ്റം സോ ഇറ്റ് ഷുഡ് ബി സം സ്പെസിഫിക് വെൽ ഡിഫൈൻഡ് യു നോ അക്കോർഡിംഗ് ടു ലോ ഇറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ബി സംതിങ് വെൽ ഡിഫൈൻഡ് ദ റൊട്ടേഷൻ റേറ്റ് ബട്ട് ദ സോളാർ സിസ്റ്റം സം ഡിഫറെന്റ് ഇത് റൊട്ടേറ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് കുറച്ച് കൂടുതലോ കുറവാണ് അങ്ങനെ തോന്നും And the, 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 the expansion of the universe. Expansion of the universe, we know that the Big Bang is going to expand. The rate of the expansion is going to be the same. That is, according to the expansion of the rate of the expansion, we are going to be able to do that. We are going to be able to do something like dark matter, dark energy, that may influence the rotation the expansion of the universe then to explain that dark matter action dark energy the present theory is not sufficient present theory as i told you the standard model theory and the the, the available theory is not uh, not sufficient apra ana new theory varna angane ana new theory like ana string dimensions uh, sorry string theory adol then m theory not two more theory and a theory ke prakaram നമ്മൾ സാധാരണ മാക്സിമം ഫോർ ഡയമെൻഷൻസ് ആണ് ത്രീ സ്പേസ് ഡയമെൻഷൻസ് വൺ ടൈം അതിന്റെ സ്ട്രിങ് തിയറിന്റെ പ്രകാരം ടെൻ ഡയമെൻഷൻസ് ആണ് അപ്പൊ ടെൻ ഡയമെൻഷൻസിന്റെ ഒരു പോസിബിലിറ്റി എന്താന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ ഇത് മൾട്ടി യൂണിവേഴ്സ് പോസിബിൾ എന്നാണ് അപ്പൊ സ്ട്രിങ് തിയറിക്കാണ് മൾട്ടി യൂണിവേഴ്സിന്റെ സാധ്യതകൾ പറയുന്നത് ബട്ട് സോഫർ നോ എവിഡൻസ് വിത്തൌട്ട് എവിഡൻസ് വി ക്യാൻ സേ വി ക്യാൻ സേ വിതർ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് എക്സിസ്റ്റ് ഓർ നോട്ട് വി ഡോ നോ അത്രേ പക്ഷെ തിയറി പിന്നെ ഹൗലിസ് ഒരു പിന്നെ പവർഫുൾ ആർഗ്യുമെന്റ് ആണ് പക്ഷെ വിത്തൌട്ട് എവിഡൻസ് നമുക്കൊന്നും പറയാൻ കഴിയില്ല അത്ര അതാണ് അതിൽ പറയാനുള്ളത് എക്സ്പേർട്ട് യു ക്യാൻ സെർച്ച് മോർ No more questions, I think. So if it is like that, uh, so we can wind up the session and uh, thank you, thank you, Abdullah. Thank you for coming here and uh, interacting with our students. And I invite uh, Muhammad Ismail, Association Secretary, Department of Physics, to express a vote of thanks. Ismail, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Good evening to everyone. First of all, I thank the Almighty for giving me an opportunity to attend this webinar. It was an excellent seminar. And Abdullah, Abdul Salam, sir, have given us a clear-cut idea regarding the fundamental particles and fundamental force. Thank you, sir. I expect more and more seminars from him on various topics in the future. I also thank our principal, Muhammad Iqbal sir, academic director, Muhammad Sajid PK, secretary, Muhammad Faru, Mr. Farooq Usman, and SAP Salam sir, who always strive to give us a good future. I also thank our dear teachers, Damandran sir, Jathra Miss, Safina Miss, and other teachers who are present here for encouraging us with lots of webinars. And thank you for everyone for joining this meeting. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Abdullah. So, I will leave, okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs>
so we shall leave okay okay next nammude students inde oru webinar avam le namaku if anybody is ready we can conduct the yeah. webinar okay. <laughs> okay sir thank you okay so i am leaving